Hey there, and welcome to our next topic, which is doing radical exponents. So we're going to look at how to rewrite radicals using exponents. What? That's even a thing? Yes. So you can see that we have an X, which is going to be our base, and the N is going to be the root that we're dealing with. So this, another way to rewrite it, kind of looks like this. So we can see 1 over n. So a lot of the times you actually won't see the one, it's usually hidden and looks kind of like this. I always like to add it just so that I can see it, which can really, really help with rewriting. So if we have another one where maybe there's an extra exponent on here, you can still leave it x as your base, but the difference is you have to the a, maybe x squared, x cubed, and then maybe there's a root that happens to be right underneath it. So divided by n. So you can kind of see that's a quick little rewrite, a quick little rule. So let's power things up a bit and just focus on converting between the two. So on here, I always like to have this as the base. So this is the same thing as x. And then to the seventh power, so we can write it just like we're used to, like x to the seventh, except this time, instead of having it with a fourth, root, the way that we're going to do that is just do divided by four. And that's how you rewrite them. So we can try the same thing here. Again, I can see I have another fourth root on the outside. I still have x as the base, so whatever I'm going to multiply by. And the difference is I know I'm dividing by four because it's a fourth root. But it's like that last one we saw. It looks like there's no exponent, but there's an exponent of one. So x to the one fourth. So it kind of looks something like that. All right, let's try some of these. So it looks like I have an x, so it is still the base, and I have to the fifth. So I'm gonna try to keep these colors consistent for us. So I have x to the fifth. And this one's weird because I see a root, but there's no number next to it. So think about what we would normally call these. We would normally say it's a square root. So with these, they have a hidden two. We don't always put two there. So that one we can say is x to the five halves. Same thing on this one, square root of 16. We can always rewrite that as having a base of 16, and then I don't really see that. You can even say to the first, you can kind of see it like that if you'd like. Then we have a square root, so we have 16 to the one half power. And normally we simplify that to four, but for now we're just focused on, like I said, rewriting. All right, the next one, real similar, we're just gonna write it with radicals. So here's our base. We basically have x squared, and then I see a dividing by three. So that's gonna be a cube root of x squared is the way that we can rewrite that. Same thing on the next one, it looks real similar. X to the, the next one looks real similar. So it looks like the base is the number 100. And it looks like it says to the first, and I see a one half. So the easiest way to do this one is just saying square root of 100. All right, on seven and eight, we're gonna focus on actually evaluating and simplifying these. So a common thing is when we see negative eight with a one third, a lot of us try to divide it and say that this is the final answer. Ooh, no, this is an exponent. So it's gonna be a little bit different. So again, you can always try rewriting it just because sometimes that can make that just a little bit easier. So here it looks like I'm doing a cube root of negative eight, which actually has a really friendly number. So again, what cubed would give me negative eight. So in this case, the answer is actually negative two for a final answer. And you can see that's how I'm showing my work. I'm just rewriting it. All right, same thing here. Oh, I'm seeing a negative and I'm seeing a fraction. Okay, so it looks like I've got a lot going on here. So I like to do the same thing. Okay, 121 is the base. 
I see a negative, okay, ooh, and I see a division going on. So this is where I like to make a couple of notes. Negative exponents mean that I switch, and I can see division by two means that's gonna be a root. So instead of doing regular square root of 121, I need to make sure that I switch it since it's a negative exponent. And then just be sure that I simplify all the way. So one over 11 for a final answer in the red. All right, these tend to be a little bit weird. So the biggest thing with this one, you'll wanna watch out and look for parentheses because right here, I always like to rewrite this as negative and then you have 16 to the 1 fourth. So it kind of goes all the way back to PEMDAS. So are there any parentheses? Nope. All right, then I need to deal with the exponents, okay? So I'm gonna rewrite that 16 to the 1 fourth power. So that's the same thing as the fourth root of 16. Well, that's actually a really friendly number, it happens to be two. And then I can deal with the rest. Is there anything to multiply or divide by? Ooh, there actually is. There's the negative that's still on the outside. And that is what's gonna be our final answer, negative two. And then the rest of PEMDAS adding or subtracting, whatever order. All right, eight to the two thirds. Well, that just seems a little crazy. So you have a couple ways that you can write this. One way that you can write this is I see eight squared, okay? And then I see divided by three in the power. So that means a cube root. Here's the really weird thing. That would be cube root of 64. Well, that's a little bit hard to do without a calculator. It still works. So I'm gonna write it differently to help us see it first. I'm gonna do the cube root of eight, since that's something that I know, and then I'm going to square that number. And you'll see that either one that you do gives you the exact same answer. So on this one, cube root of eight, well, I know that's two, because two cubed gives me eight. Oh man, that is really easy to square two. That number I definitely know. But then the good thing is, like I said, either way you get the exact same answer, which leads to four just kind of depends which way that you see it. So you try to make the math as easy on yourself as possible. All right, this one's getting a little crazy. I see a power on the outside. So here's all these rules are gonna come back and start to build. So I gotta do four to the three halves, okay. And I have to do X squared also to the three halves. All right, I'm gonna focus on the number first. Okay, right now it's telling me I'd have to cube four and then take a square root. Okay, well, that's a little hard for me to do, but I know what square root of four is, and then I can cube that number. All right, let's take a look at this one. I always like to put it over one, because I think that helps me see it. The good thing is I see a two on top and I see a two on the bottom. So those actually can cancel each other out, which gives me X cubed. Just be sure you simplify for a final answer. So here's two cubed X cubed. So final answer is eight X cubed and then I'm gonna box it so I can easily find it later. Ooh, same thing on this next one, yowza. I don't know about you, but I don't know 27 squared off the top of my head without really use of a calculator. But here's the good news. I'm pretty confident that I know the cube root of 27. So let's do a little bit of rewriting. We're gonna do the cube root 
of 27. And then we're going to square that number. So what I'm going to do to show you why we can do that is rewrite this using those fractional exponents, those rational exponents. So there you go, 27 to the 2 thirds. So you can see you can kind of do either one first. And again, this one works out really nicely because cube root of 27 is 3. 3 squared gets me to 9. All right, I see, ooh, gosh, 125 to the negative 2 thirds. Oof, all right, well, first thing I'm going to do is deal with that negative exponent. So I'm going to do 1 all over 125 to the 2 thirds. Currently, I would have to try to do 125 squared and then I'd have to cube root it. Well, that just sounds like a nightmare. So let's try to redo that as something different. Like maybe we can do the cube root of 125. That's a friendly number. And then I can square my final results because that's going to be 1 over 5 squared. Ah, oh, that's much easier to work with. 1 over 25. All right, first thing I'm going to do is do a little bit of rewriting. I think that's going to save us a lot of time on something like this. So here, let's see, I've got r squared. I'm going to do that one in one color. And I'm going to do the t's in another color. Let's try to rewrite this bottom one because I see t cubed. So I'm going to start with that, t cubed. And then I see a fourth root. So that means I'm going to do t to the 3 fourths. And then the t's, I can use my rules that I saw the other day and subtract some exponents. I've got 3 minus 3 fourths. So whenever you subtract fractions, you need a common denominator. They're kind of getting subtracted from a common group. So instead of having the number 3, I'm going to change it to 12 over 4 because that is the exact same thing as 3. Now I can actually subtract. So here I'm going to see r squared. It's just going to get carried along. And then I'm going to see t is now to the 9 over 4. And honestly, that is a great final answer. We'll simplify that a little further for now. Go ahead and leave it as that. This is bad. Just because you see a t cubed and a t cubed, they do not cancel out because that is under a fourth root. So please be extremely cautious when you try to simplify and when you try to cancel stuff. Be very, very cautious. So I'm going to do w, and that means I've got negative 3 over 8 times negative 4. 4 over 9. Well, that seems a little crazy. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you a way that I like to simplify. It's one of my favorite things. So I see negative 3 divided by 9. So I'm going to do a W. It's going to stay the same. All right. Well, negative 3 divided by 9 is the same thing as negative 1 over three, those are exactly the same thing. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the other ones. I see negative four divided by eight, and that's friendly enough because that's the same thing as negative one over two. And then all I'm gonna do is simplify for that final answer. So I've got w to the one over six. So these extremely cautious be sure everything gets distributed. So I've got negative 4 over 5 multiplied by negative 5, and I like to add over 1. I like to do it early so I don't forget that it's actually there. So I've got negative 5 is going to go to both of these. So I've got x, and I see to the neg oof, negative 10 times negative 5, so that's x to the 50. Yowza! Hopefully that won't go any more crazy. And then I've got this last one. So I have another N and I see two over five 
times negative five, and you guessed it, all over one. So what I like to do on here, I see a five and a five. So you can either cancel both of those out if you happen to see that. The other way you can do it is you can multiply. So negative four times negative five, which is 20, divided by five, so n to the fourth. But you actually get that either way. And let's do that last one, which again, you can use that same trick. So you can see either the fives cancel out. So you either have n to the negative two as one possible option. Or if you happen to see, here's negative 10 divided by five is still negative two. Some of you like to see negative exponents and switch it to the top, which is usually what I like to do. Sometimes I like to cross them out so I don't lose track of what I've moved together. All right, since I'm multiplying, exponents are gonna add. So I've got n to the sixth on top, all over x to the 50 for a final answer in white. If you don't like that, you can always subtract your exponents. So if you happen to see four minus a negative two exponent, you still get the same exact answer. It's really whatever works best for you. Ooh, I see lots of roots. We've never done something like this. Well, here's what we're gonna do. Let's focus on just what's underneath first. So I see 27, and that is a square root. So that's to the one half. And I have all of that is getting a cube root. Okay, so let's rewrite that. So I've got 27 still to the one half because that's a square root and let's rewrite. So I'm gonna have this and I see really is one third because it's a cube root. Well, that's pretty easy because now all I'm gonna do is multiply those fractions. So it's just gonna be 27 to the one over six. For a final answer, rewritten, you're gonna leave it just like that. We're gonna simplify numbers like this here in the future.